the station covering all of the DMV. This is DC News Now. Happening now at 6, covering the entire DMV. Search for suspects. Two people killed in the district lately, now named and rewards offered for arrests. And details from Dulles, the new information about what caused a police scooter to catch fire, prompting a passenger evacuation. And back to school students gearing up for the first day. We're stretching your dollar if you're still playing catch up for supplies and essentials. And it was a little more humid today, but still a nice afternoon across the region. What will it be in store for us on your Monday? Stick around. The answer coming up. And fun at the fair in case you missed it before the first day of school. I think it's a great way to ease in that school's about to start and like I guess like relieve that stress. How Montgomery County and Arlington residents and visitors spent the weekend in the sun. Good evening. Thank you for joining us for DC News Now at 6. I'm Ben Dennis this Sunday evening. New tonight out of the district where DC police are investigating multiple homicides. One overnight, two others during last week. Overnight, a 34 year old man was killed, shot in Northeast on 8th Street. Police say calls came in just after 10 p.m. This is near 13th and Florida Avenue. 34 year old Kevin McDowell of Northeast has been ID'd as the victim. Yesterday morning, police say a 34 year old man died after being stabbed several times. Thursday morning around 9 a.m. near the D.C. jail here in Southeast. They say that Darrow Johnson of Clinton, Maryland was declared dead. After the stabbing on Thursday, 30 year old Musay Razine of Southeast was arrested. Assault charges could soon be upgraded. Finally, police now have ID'd the victim in a fatal shooting Tuesday on Galveston Place in Southwest. Just before 2 a.m., police responded and tried to save the life of 40 year old Alondo Pugh. No known address for him, but he did die on scene. There are $25,000 rewards for information leading to arrests. And in Prince George's County, police are investigating an early morning hit and run. They say they responded to the accident on University Boulevard around 320. When they arrived, they found an adult man who was declared dead on scene. The driver did not stay on site of the crime. Contact PG County Police if you have any information. And in Virginia, Fairfax County Police have arrested two teenagers for a robbery at a rusted golf course earlier this week. Fairfax County Police say this happened on Wednesday at Hidden Creek Country Club, where a group of teens pulled a gun on golfers and stole their golf cart, also an 18-year-old involved as well. There were no injuries from the altercation. Two of the teens identified leading to the arrest of the 16 and 14-year-olds who have not had their identities released to the public. And they're both being charged with narcotic and firearm possession related charges on your screen photo of the firearms recovered by police. Meanwhile, Fairfax County police are still looking for other members of the group, including 18 year old Dion Luangraj of Lynchburg. Please contact police if you have any information and new details tonight after a police scooter caught fire inside Dulles International Airport last night, hurting two airport police officers and evacuating passengers. Airport told DC News now a lithium ion battery that combusted was to blame. More video shared with our newsroom shares the moments when the flames broke out, sending dark smoke toward the ceiling at 730. People evacuated the main terminal there until they were let back in around nine. The only injuries we're told were from those two officers. They are expected to be OK. And because these batteries could be dangerous if not packed correctly, the FAA shares some recommendations if you have a lithium ion battery when boarding. No damaged or recalled batteries are allowed. Batteries limited to those with a 100 watt hour rating and they must be for personal use. And continuing our coverage with the tragedy at a DC dog daycare. On Monday, those floodwaters rushed into district dogs on Rhode Island Avenue, drowning 10 pets. You may have seen plenty of coverage. We know more about what happened that day as our Daniel Hamburg explains about the lingering concerns about the emergency response. City Administrator Kevin Donahue says there were at least three 911 calls made between 506 and 518 on Monday. Each of the calls came from different individuals, two of them from out of the jurisdiction, one from the last one at 518 from it looks like individuals who were inside of district dogs. At 506, firefighters radioed back to the Office of Unified Communications, saying they set up a command post. Four minutes later at 510, a dispatcher radios this. All of at the district dog at 680 Rhode Island Avenue Northeast. 
a water leak. A water leak, but there was actually six feet of water outside the building that crashed in. Donahue says a call to 911 at 518 made clear there was an emergency. At 521, dispatchers told firefighters there were seven people trapped inside and what the caller said was 12 feet of water. Four minutes later at 525, a different dispatcher asked if they knew about the people trapped inside. That's affirmative. We have the boat working their way to rescue two people and they're going to go check it now. It's still unclear when firefighters first knew people and dogs were trapped. So Questions I, I Donahue like punted today exactly saying they need time to gather more info. I need for the um, folks looking at it to listen to all the radio traffic, uh, to interview folks and put timestamps on it. And that yet hasn't happened. Reporting for DC News Now, I'm Daniel Hamburg. Well, thanks to Daniel for that report. Hotter today than the start of the weekend, reaching into the 90s today. Our Scott Sumner standing by at the Weather Center. He's got those weather headlines you need to not only start your work week, but for kids heading back to class and there's teachers as well. Scott, you've got looks like some temperatures on the board behind you. Absolutely. These are the highs for this afternoon. And like I told you yesterday, we'd get up into the 90s. Sure enough, that is what has come across the area. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at the highs. D.C. at 91, Manassas 91, Frederick at 91. Got into the lower 90s here, in even Woodstock and Luray, both areas sitting at 93 degrees. Now, currently we sit at a temperature in the district here of 86 degrees, lots of sunshine, southerly breeze at 10 miles an hour, and the dew point temperature, while well, this is not in the 50s, it's into the middle 60s, so it is creeping up there, and thereby it feels just a little bit more humid, and that does include our neighbors up towards Washington County here, where uh, the dual highway and, uh, and uh, uh, Hagerstown reside here. This is the dual highway, and it moves right up in towards the Hagerstown area. We do have also a front that's going to drop on in. I'll talk about the timing of that front, and if it does bring us any rain, that's all coming up with my future forecast in just a little bit. That future cast, looking forward to it. Thank you, Scott. And in D.C., nearly 20 people were told have been displaced after an apartment fire in Northwest earlier today. According to D.C. Fire and Rescue, the fire happened inside this apartment building on First Street. 12 adults, four children, and two cats are without a home. Thankfully, there were no injuries, and the Red Cross is helping people who live there. As of now, the cause of the fire has not yet been released to our newsroom. And now we check in with sports. Brandy Flores standing by at the monitor right there. Brandy, I know that the Washington Nationals are finishing up their series against the Philadelphia Phillies, but this isn't just a regularly scheduled baseball game. No, Ben, it definitely is not. Uh, right now, the Washington Nationals are taking part in the MLB Little League Series, and that's happening up in Pennsylvania. And so last year, the O's took part, but this year, it's the Nats' turn, and RJ Krom is is live at Bowman Field in Williamsport, where the Nats will be playing in just under an hour against the Phillies. And Jake, you got to witness the Nationals at Little League near your hometown. How's the atmosphere out there? Yeah, Brandy, it was ecstatic. The crowd was absolutely berserk. Washington Nationals, along with the Philadelphia Phillies, making their way up here to Williamsport, Pennsylvania for the MLB Little League Classic. But we're here at Bowman Field right now. But earlier on, we were out at Little League and the crowd was enormous waiting for these players to get in, welcoming them in earlier today, along with the presidents. I know a lot of people loving Teddy Roosevelt and those guys. They're signing autographs, taking photos, and of course, you got to go down the grass hill when you come to Little League here in Williamsport. Even Teddy Roosevelt testing out the hill wasn't the best, uh, best run by him, but uh, he gave it a shot nonetheless. Dom Smith, Josiah Gray, C.J. Abrams, and Jeter Downs, as well as many other Nationals players, sliding down the hill with all the kids picking up the pointers and tips along the way. The players, along with manager Davey Martinez, giving their thoughts on the entire experience. It reminds me of being a kid, you know, having fun doing doing things like that. It's a lot of fun. Well, I remember when I was a kid, uh, I used to always look up to like um, major leaguers and want to talk to them and want autographs from them. So, so being able to sign for all these kids is uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, they gave me great advice. I think uh, I just need a little more practice. They told me tuck my knees, pull up the front, and let it rip. Really cool. Uh, been wanting to do that forever. So. Can you sign my shoe? Really cool to do it with the kids, getting mobbed. Uh, really cool. And it's been an incredible experience. Um, like I said, this is, brings everything back to perspective. You know, these kids play with a lot of heart, a lot of passion. That's what it's all about.
So obviously the MLB Little League Classic, uh, a big event that they do here at the Little League World Series. It's only been happening since 2017, but it's closed off to the fans outside of the Little League World Series. It's just the friends, the family, and the players that compete in Little League, uh, the kids, that get to be here at Bowman Field to take part in this special event. They were tossing balls over top of the netting for the kids, signing autographs earlier on as well as here today. It's quite the spectacle, and we're going to have plenty more coverage of the game itself tonight on game night at 11 p.m., but for now we'll send it back to the studio live here from my hometown, Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Jake Robb, D.C. News Now. Back to you, Brandy. All right, thanks for that, Jake. Yeah, Jake from, from that area, and he was so excited to be there, and I can't think of a better person that we could have sent up there for that. And the players look like they're having the time of their lives. They do, as did <laughs> Teddy Roosevelt in that costume. That head is so heavy, it was weighing him down <laughs> as he went down that hill. Yeah, we're going to have more sports later on in the show. We're continuing our countdown to kickoff series. We're all about the kids today, Ben. Always, always. <laughs> Thank you, Brandy. Appreciate that.